For subtitles, please click here and choose your preferred language. I was defenseless totally. You know, I, I didn't know how to react. I used to cry a lot. I didn't know whether I could stay in the house. I didn't know whether I had to leave the house. I was like, I didn't know what to do with myself. I also had to discover myself. What was it that Menaka wanted? What was it that was best for my son? What would I do with my life? She asked me if uh, I would be her secretary. And I was so grateful because those are the things that she and I had in common, you know, books and writing. She put me in charge all these years of her library and I'd catalogued it for her. You know, and we did a lot of reading and exchanging of books. Um, in fact, somebody else would get sarees as gifts, but I would get books. <laughs> so um, she was um, very keen that I would be her secretary. And then um, other members of the family said, well, if you're going to make her your secretary, then we'll leave. So she wrote me a note, apologizing and saying that perhaps not. And then I had nothing to do. I didn't know whether I could stay in the house. I didn't know whether I had to leave the house. I was like, I didn't know what to do with myself. I spent uh, a lot of time with my son. In fact, I had him reading by the age of one mm -hmm. and we put him into school at 13 months. Mm -hmm. So, so much was my intensity on him. And I don't remember what else I did. I read a lot. I think I must have slept a lot. He was a lovely child. I remember when he was about, I think, five months or six months. He was actually, you know, looking and thinking. And I was teaching him all the time. It, we never did any goo -ga with him. And he had, he was like a prodigy. We brought him to the dining table. And he was sitting next to my mother-in-law. had a high chair made for him. And he used to sit next to her. And the first day he was sitting next to her, I think he must have been about seven or eight months, and he was such a happy child. He never cried a single time when he was a baby. In fact, my mother used to get a bit worried. She used to say that, you know, he doesn't cry, he doesn't cry. And it's true. And in all the years that I've known my son, he's been happy. He's a calm, placid child. But, so he was sitting next to her, and she was feeding him food. And then he turned around and he said, Daddy, I'm going to And we all burst out laughing, you know. And then we were going in a car, and she looked at two cows, and she said, Deko Firoz, Mama cow or Papa cow? And then he looks at it and he said, And wo wala Dadi cow or Chachi cow or Chacha cow? <laughs> so they got on very well together. And the whole thing is a blur. Punctuated by deep hurt. I mean, you know, punctuated by family hurt because things just started getting very strained. Members of the family just being mean for no reason whatsoever. And I didn't know what I was supposed to do. And I was defenseless totally. You know, I, I didn't know how to react. I used to cry a lot. I didn't have, that's about it. And I um, couldn't put things right because I didn't know how to put them right because I didn't know what I'd done to make them wrong. It was just shock. I just spent three or four years just completely frightened and shocked. You know, I also had to discover myself because as a person, I was a pale, pale, pale shadow of my husband. You know, I just had to come and realize what was it that Menaka wanted? What was it that was best for my son? What would I do with my life? So I started a small bookshop in a little hotel called Manor Hotel. Mm -hmm. And I used to work at that the whole day. I used to scrub and dust all the books and wait for customers mm -hmm. <laughs> and things. And then, you know, then I put immediately after Sanjay died, I took the money that he had from a trust fund mm -hmm. that we'd been left by somebody we didn't know, just out of the blue, mm -hmm. a huge sum of eight lakh rupees. Mm -hmm. And I built an animal hospital and called it the Sanjay Gandhi Animal Welfare Center. So I used to either go to the bookshop or I used to go and get the hospital built. And I used to sit there with the labor and the contractor and the architect and see it coming up. And then I, so that was my life. 
he kept going because she would ring up and ask for him. And he kept meeting her until um, the family put the foot down. And then? And then he wasn't allowed to go anymore. He she did. died after a year. There was a very strong bond that existed long after we stopped speaking to each other. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think a lot of her relatives now who come and see me say that, you know, if she had been alive, she would have been very proud of the way I turned out. Erika was a star, but she was also an excellent actress. When I made Kalyug and I took her, everybody was just quite surprised that, you know, why would I take somebody like Rekha? Subscribe to our YouTube channel, press the bell icon and stay entertained.